Ladies and gentlemen, let's read game into the comment video. We might finally have a solid release date, or at least a tentatively solid, if that makes any sense, release date for the Radeon R9 370 and possibly the rest of the Radeon series, although it's a bit hard to know at the moment. So, as you may know, the release date for the Radeon GPUs have been pretty much all over the shop recently, and we originally heard that they were going to be released in the first quarter of 2015, and it looked like that was the case, but it was pushed back. Now, the story goes, as far as we understand it, the reasoning behind it is that AMD felt that they wanted to shift more of the 200 range, and they wanted more time to work on the GPUs. But now it would appear that the GPUs are going to be released, at least the 370, early next month. In other words, April. Now, we have this information because of a couple of leaked images, which demonstrates that the XFX range of core uh, edition uh, 370s is, is going to be released. And we don't have all the specifications, but what we do know is that they're going to come in two configurations, 4 uh, four gigabytes and 2 gigabytes on a 256-bit uh, interface. And it's going to be between 110 and 130 watts, and it's going to require one single six pin PCIe connection and it's going to be utilizing the chipset known as Trinidad Pro. Now we even have the measurement of the card which is supposedly 167 mm in length which is pretty reasonable it should easily fit in a smaller uh, case or a more tightly packed case but aside from that, we don't know too much regarding the specifications. I can give you some rumoured specifications, but we've been through them a couple of times anyway. So it's not really that much uh, point in me going through them. The big GPUs, the ones that I'm sure most of you are really excited about, the ones that are making people bounce up and down, let's say the 380X, the 390X, no clue if they're still coming out. The rumours are that there's going to be a slight delay between the 370 and the higher end. So we could be seeing the higher end cards in like, say, and this is not a rumour started by industry insider, this is just me speculating, we could see them in May. But we've also heard some speculate it could be even June. However, that is pure speculation. We do know, however, at least according to these leaks, that the release date is likely for the 370s to be in April. So, what about the other cards? Well, we can talk a little bit about the performance. So, if you remember back to GDC, and I have uh, talked about this a little bit, but it's worth throwing into this video just in case you missed it. At GDC, there was a card that AMD were demonstrating. They were showing off a GPU for the virtual reality performance. And while they did not tell you what the card was, they, they said it was an unannounced Radeon GPU. That's all they said. It's unannounced. We're not saying what it is. We're not going to tell you the specs. But here's the performance. And that was pretty much it. Now, that GPU, um, according from eyewitnesses and you know what was shown, it was operating just over 50% faster than the R9 290X. So, immediately, it's most likely not going to be the 370, and it's probably not going to be the 375 or any of those interim cards. It could be the 380, or it could, or the 380X, or it could even be the 390X. The 390X, as I'm sure you're probably aware, is sporting HBM high bandwidth memory uh, with a 4096 bit interface, which is absolute insanity, but. To reiterate, we don't know what was actually being shown at GDC. We don't know, we can speculate, but in reality we just, you know, have no real confirmation until AMD blesses us with that information. It's a bit of an odd time because NVIDIA, of course, have announced the Titan, but we don't know what the next generation Titan, the Titan X, actually has under its hood. We know it's got 12 gigs of RAM, but that doesn't really tell us anything, as you probably would be aware. For example, and obviously this is not even slightly accurate, but for all we know, just saying it's got 12 gigs of RAM, it could be based on the GTX 960 core and has 12 gigs of RAM. So that doesn't tell you the amount of shaders on it. Reality is, of course, it's probably going to be the equivalent of the GTX 980 Ti, but with the 
addition of extra VRAM and of course the addition of extra uh, compute performance which is one of the primary reasons of course to go for Titan but that's going to be like a thousand bucks that's what the rumored price range is which make, would make sense around a thousand dollars given the expense of the VRAM as well as all the other components in the system plus of course the price premium so here's the here's the situation both companies have gotten themselves into if you think about it both are holding these cards Nvidia know what their specs are and they probably have an indication what AMD have and vice versa so when one of them goes first it's got to be this I, this is why I don't blame AMD for holding fire and to actually wait on the launch because people, some people are a bit pissed at them and I can understand it from the point of view of even myself I want to review the bloody thing and I want to try it out and I want a new graphics card and all the other bits and bobs but you don't want to launch a GPU until it's ready because we've all seen paper launches and they're crap they are, I mean, I think it was the X800 yeah, it was the X800s back in the day when AGP was like, you know, kind of being phased out. And X800, uh, the Pros and the XTs. They basically launched them on paper. You could get a few, but they were like gold dust, honestly. You might as well, you know, it was bad trying to get hold of them. And you would see someone on a forum get one and it was like, what's the performance like? And blah, blah, blah. And it was, it was kind of a mess. Plus as well... They didn't support the latest shader models, and it, it was a bit of a mess. And AMD are not the only, or back then it was ATI, of course, but they're not the only ones to do paper launches. NVIDIA have had a couple as well. And you even had, and this is not a paper launch or anything like that, but even back in the original GeForce days, you had this situation where the GeForce uh, 256 launched with SDR, and most people said it's not really worth buying the 256 back then because it wasn't really that much faster than the TNT 2s or especially the ultras simply because the memory on those GPUs just did not have enough bandwidth and so a little bit later you had the DDR memory come out but then it wasn't too much later after that that you had the GeForce 2s so what I'm basically telling you with loads and loads of words is that AMD don't want to release a GPU and find that you know, they can't put out sufficient quantities or they can't, um, or, you know, they're having cooling problems or they've got bad or unoptimized drivers or whatever. And I'm not saying that is the case, but I think it is better to wait and then see, kind of get the best performance as possible. And the other problem, and this is a major problem with a lot of websites, is let's assume that you do a launch um, it's not really to be fair even a website problem it's actually kind of the the mind of the customer first impressions are king so let's assume that you release a GPU it doesn't it doesn't matter let's just say Bob's GPU releases in let's just say March and let's say that it gets I'm just using a figure of 50 frames a second in Tomb Raider at 1440p that's just the figure I don't know why I selected Tomb Raider at 1440p but what have you but there's a driver update which appears, let's say in April, and that and in April it fixes the performance of that GPU. It now it gets 150 frames a second in Tomb Raider. But the problem is the consumer and the cut and, and the actual general public's perception of the GPU is still going to be mired for some time afterwards. It, it, it can be a little bit of a sticking point, and it can definitely hurt sales. So I think having a good optimized driver is the better option. But it also is kind of sucky. And AMD are quite lucky, to be honest, that NVIDIA had this massive, massive problem with the GTX 970s. Because the ironic thing is, if, if NVIDIA had just come clean about the GTX 970s, people probably wouldn't have cared so much. There probably would have been a few less sales, but most people wouldn't have cared. Um, but right now, it's really hurt their public relations standpoint. And... Ugh. So AMD have definitely stolen quite a few sales and that's why they've reduced the R9 290X price and to be fair, as you know, we've just recently reviewed the R9 290X and it's really fast. Yes, it's not as fast as the GTX 980s, for example, but it trades blows and slightly faster in some cases than the R9, than the GTX uh, 970. I say trade blows because obviously sometimes in certain games the 970s architecture just because of the way 
uh, the games are designed or what have you. Sometimes it's the reverse in the 970 slightly the win. So you might get one game winning in say Metro. So one GPU wins in say Metro. And another GPU wins in Tomb Raider. And in other games it can just be complete wash. In other words there's like 0 0.3 frames a second difference or something. So I've said a bunch of words. But the main, the main point that I'm trying to make is it looks like the GPUs are coming. This is an old article as well, which is linked in the video description if you so wish to see more of the images and all the other bits and bobs. But for now, hopefully you found this somewhat interesting or somewhat informative or what have you. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.